Have you ever eaten unsalted scrambled eggs? Not good. It could be better with salt. Way better with salt. We're not even talking about a scrambled egg dish. This is carbonara. 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 You kill the carbonara. Chef Ryan Sow here, not your typical chef. And today I'm going to be reacting to Italian chef reacts to worst carbonara video. We're going to be reacting to my homeboy Vincenzo's plate. Absolutely love that dude. Along with probably the most endearing, lovely, worst cook in the world, Kay's cooking. What could possibly go wrong? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. Before I go on with today's episode, I do want to shout out all of my amazing sous chef level patrons. Thank you so much for your support. And if you've been watching this show and want to support further, please consider becoming a patron by hitting the link in the description below, where if you join up, you can take advantage of some awesome perks. Finally, if you could take a second to follow me on Instagram at Chef Brian Sow, that would be greatly appreciated as I'm trying to hit 10,000 followers. And with all that out of the way, let's react to some shit. <laughs> Is that cold water? Oh, fuck. Okay. We are 10 seconds into the video and there is a massive... F up. <laughs> and look at Vincenzo's face. <laughs> you need to boil the water first. Vincenzo's the cream. Yeah, but not a lot if you get what I mean. You might have to have it all then. <laughs> Legit, I did not understand a single word of what they just said. <laughs> I was just laughing because Vincenzo was laughing. Guys, let me warn you, this video is not for you if you don't feel well, if you're too delicate or too soft. This video can ruin your life. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, and you're not really fine, you just can't get into it because they would never... Wow. A video that requires a disclaimer, you know that we are in for some shit. Hi and welcome to Vincenzo's Plate, the place where you get to learn how to cook Italian food. <laughs> That bad? It's definitely that bad, especially uh, the first clip seeing this giant chunk of pork just get thrown on top. Or... Spaghetti carbonara or something. Carbonara. Carbonara or something. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so she doesn't know how to pronounce it. She has, probably doesn't know what it is, and you're <laughs> shooting me how to make it. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not. I don't know how much water to put in. I just put parts of it in. Doesn't look like a lot. But if for you it's a lot, okay. For me, it doesn't look like a lot. It looks like it's nothing in there. Always use a large pot when you cook pasta, but there's no point yep. for me to turn on. <laughs> so let's talk really quick about the pasta water and cooking of pasta. I mentioned in my reaction to Vincenzo's carbonara video that a good rule of thumb is always to use a bigger pot with a mass of water that is greater than what you think you actually need. Main reason is because when you put pasta into the boiling pasta water, which it should absolutely be at a boil, the pasta is going to cool down that water and then it's going to take some time for that temp to come up. And the second reason you want all that to happen is that if the pasta sits in water too long and it's not cooking, the starches are going to saturate and then it's going to give you that fat, gross, soggy pasta, which is not what we want for good pasta. Now, I mentioned that I always use a larger mass, and this is more, I mean, yeah, it should be applied to both the home and the professional kitchen setting, but it is especially important in the professional setting because when you are working service and have 20, 30 plates of uh, orders of pasta coming in, you are constantly dunking pasta into the pasta water. It's never going to catch up. So if you actually look at professional pasta cookers, there is a section of the water with a platform where the baskets sit on. But underneath that platform is actually 
actually the, the heating coils and like another tank, like a sub tank housing more water. And that's actually literally to just make sure you have a big mass of water. So even though you are dunking in six, seven uncooked portions of pasta into that water, it will still stay at temp and relatively close to a boil. I mean, if you load it up with pasta, it's definitely gonna no longer be at a boil, but you want it to recover. Give me the sound. I want to cook it for 11 minutes. Mine wants 11 minutes. You need to boil the water yeah. first and one tablespoon of salt. No olive oil. The grape, the grains, and so the spaghetti will cook nicely now. The spaghetti needs to be merged, needs to be mm. under the water. Yeah. <laughs> But there's no way they're going under the water because the water is not boiling. Yeah. yeah, the pot is not big enough. There is not enough mass of water for the spaghetti to be submerged or at the very least close to being submerged. So what's going to happen is the section of spaghetti that is submerged underwater is going to cook more than the rest of the pasta. As that cooks, it's going to wilt down and that pasta is going to slowly kind of sink in to the rest of the water. But again, that section that was submerged first will probably get soggy before the rest of the pasta is cooked. So that is why it's important to have that mass of boiling water. And uh, lastly, it wasn't even at a boil. So that's gonna make the soggy saturation of the starch even worse. But some brownie points for her multitasking. She's got her pasta, water, <laughs> <laughs> and pasta going and now she looks like she's starting her sauce and i'm not sure is that butter or lard i'm not exactly sure but let's keep watching and uh, you got a putting fat in there it's something new maybe it's the future but i never use fat in carbonara because mm -hmm. the fat is already in the guanciale or pancetta and mm -hmm. when it melts it becomes oil so what vincenzo is saying is um something like pancetta which is made of pork belly guanciale which is made of the pork jowl these are both very fatty pig cuts when you heat them up in a pan and render the fat out that's you know the kitchen terminology there's so much fat you can render the fat out and essentially cook it in its own fat so you don't need additional fat i absolutely agree with vincenzo on this regard starting the pan with this fat and if she is going to cook her pancetta or guanciale next i think is excessive and unnecessary <laughs> she's got one of those laughs where you whistle as a laugh is contagious the spaghetti is on a medium heat the spaghetti is on a medium heat <laughs> they're not boiling but they're on a medium heat yeah if she's trying to get it to a boil which i don't think she necessarily realizes that she needs to get it to a boil as soon as possible because the pasta is already sitting in the water that shit should be on high heat right now most of my viewers know that my son can't have cheese not because he's lactose intolerance, because he isn't. I just don't care about your son at the moment. I just <laughs> care about what are those steaks doing in there? What are these massive pieces of bacon doing in there? Yeah. Are you making scrambled eggs with bacon? Are you making bacon and egg rolls? <laughs> what so, I, mean you have to melt. I don't know what cut that is. That looks like a like a um the equivalent of what the ribeye would be with some of the cap at the end i'm not sure if you guys know let me know but that's not bacon it's fatty you can render out fat from that for sure um okay she's making, she's making bacon and egg rolls do i see the knockout too did you i didn't have this much trouble understanding her in the other videos up until now i couldn't cannot understand a single thing she said and i'm not I, i'm pretty good with accents like understanding accents but uh today's video like it's a bit rough I'm to have... hey. oh shit she's about to commit one of the biggest sins in carbonara especially for vincenzo putting cream in there she ruined the carbonara see she ruined it. everything was so perfect until now i wouldn't really agree it was perfect but <laughs> let's keep why would you put you you are, you just want to say that fine. Oh, let's go for really fine. Like this. Oh, look at the bacon. It looks so beautiful. Perfect for carbonara. Anyway, it's just like... It's not even bacon. So, it's ham. Yeah, 
So I'm not sure about you, but this is really disappointing that 107,000 people watched this lady doing something she never made. Oh, sorry, I didn't <laughs> <laughs> What did I tell you? So, guys, she put the spaghetti in the pot with the cold water. It's been at least half an hour at this point because she's been recording maybe less, maybe five, ten minutes, let's say. But this pasta, the top pasta hasn't cooked. The top part of the pasta hasn't cooked. Only a little bit of pasta has been cooking, but hasn't been cooking because the water is not boiling yet. This spaghetti are gonna be terrible. <laughs> You're gonna have a little bit of dry, hard spaghetti, a little bit of soft spaghetti, a little bit of a really al dente spaghetti. I'm really, really, really worried. <laughs> She's putting another steak in there. She's putting another steak in there. I mean, those are those are just like thin sliced pork chops. I think that's the ribeye section. Getting my cuts wrong. So it's above the spine, right? Above the spine because the tenderloin is below the spine by the innards and that muscle doesn't get worked a lot. So that's why it's called the tenderloin. So the ribeye, yeah, yeah. So I guess that makes sense. And then the belly, you know, if the ribeye is on the back of the spine and then it's got some of the belly on there, I guess that makes sense. I'm not a butcher, okay? So if you guys know your cuts better than me, please let me know. But yeah, those are just thin sliced pork chops. <laughs> All right, let's watch the most important part of the recipe. Let's watch the moment when all the ingredients get together we combine them and i want to know i really want to know what she's capable of doing because the pasta looks very interesting the steak looks interesting the best thing that she's done even though she used the cream is the cream <laughs> now i'm going to add the cream into Ooh. this okay i'm getting crunchy i'm not even supposed to be doing this i don't know what i'm doing where's the pecorino cheese have you got pecorino cheese k Pecorino cheese, have you heard about pecorino cheese? The milk that comes from the sheep. Bleh, bleh. <laughs> you need that to make carbonara. The key component in carbonara in the sauce is the eggs, whether you go all egg yolk or a mix of egg yolk and whole egg or all whole egg, doesn't matter. Egg and pecorino. Uh, pecorino romano cheese which is made with sheep's milk and then another important component is the guanciale and typically you cook the guanciale then you get the cream warmed up on a very low heat and the pasta goes in so she's clearly cooked the pasta drained it out left the pasta in the pot and then went straight in with the cream for her to warm that up and this is what i predict she's inexperienced so she's gonna want to get this heated up quickly she's gonna have the heat way too high and it's gonna like she's gonna start it and it's gonna look okay and then all of a sudden it just all the egg coagulates very quickly because that point of like the creaminess to the egg coagulation happens very fast that's just my prediction we'll see what happens but man this is already a freaking train wreck i need that drawer off and again i need the scissors for the bacon oh right I get, the, I get what she's doing. Okay, now she's cooking the pasta. So the reason why she only half cooked the pasta before <laughs> is because she want to cook the pasta in the cream. Okay, that's a new way of cooking. Maybe it's the future. Sure. <laughs> Very smart. Very smart. She cooked the bacon and now she's chopping it with scissors. Very smart. Very smart, this is the future. This is the future of carbonara. Uh, I'm no stranger to seeing uh, protein or things being cut with scissors. In Korea, it's pretty common. My mom did it my whole life growing up. You know, we would do like a table, uh, table uh, cooked beef for chicken whatever you know then she would cut the meat with scissors um so nothing unusual but we're not off to a great start i think i think uh, vincenzo's taking the piss a little bit and just kind of <laughs> accepting it for what it is Told you. Look at all that coagulated egg. This, okay. Okay. This is not the type of 
pasta dish where you want to finish cooking your pasta in the sauce because this sauce has so much egg in it, it will coagulate if you bring it to a temperature that is high enough to actually cook the pasta. Now it will, the pasta will cook maybe five to 6%, but that's not enough to cook it done. To, to get it to where you need it to be rather. If it was like a, a tomato based sauce or basically anything without egg where something can coagulate, where the sauce has, is predominantly water and you can cook the sauce and reduce the water content and actually concentrate the flavor of the sauce that way while you're cooking the pasta in it. Okay, sure. But this is not the, the dish to be doing it. Camera skills, good camera skills. Guys, can you see what's happening to the cream? Thank God there is no cheese. But can you see what's happening to the cream and the eggs? All scrambling around. At the moment, it's still creamy, let me tell you. She didn't, she hasn't been stirring, stirring. the pasta. Mm -hmm. The heat, as you can see here, yeah. still high, very high. And she's still adding the bacon when she should have cut the bacon before. Yeah. My recommendation is this. You always make the sauce first and then you cook the pasta. So once the pasta is ready, you are ready to mix it with your sauce. Basically, what Vincenzo is referring to is mise en place, which is getting your stuff in place. And Kay should have had that bacon cooked, cut up, ready to go. Sauce, you know, I, I do, I, I was fine with her cooking the pasta and putting the sauce together. That was okay. I would, I would do the same thing. But yeah, she's clearly not ready, so she's busy cutting the bacon with her scissors while the pasta is sitting on a heat source and now there is heat concentrating on the bottom so that bottom is going to be all scrambled egg and you're going to have a terrible product. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, I'm going back home. Oh boy. <laughs> Don't go back home, please. Don't go home. We need you. We need you, we need you. She's finally stirring the pasta. Look at the bottom. Oh, God damn. That is pasta and scrambled eggs now. And there's no cheese in there either. And we didn't see her salt. Oh, oh, no bueno. <laughs> Look how dry the bottom is. It's a frittata. <laughs> this is... Like, this is a hot and tear. Mm -hmm. This is on a slow... Whoa, heat. <laughs> Turn off the heat. The Turn off the heat. <laughs> and the cooker moves again. As far as I know, the carbonara is done. Done? You think? I'm like, oh. Okay. You know, you know how many commenters keep saying they want me to review more of your videos and I keep telling them my heart can't take it? You may see me have a heart attack right now. <laughs> I need a breather. Hang on. I need, need a sip of water. Oh man. Oh, that was rough. Okay. Need to psych myself up. Oh, let's get, let's get back into it. Let's see how she serves it. So uh, do you want to come and do the taste test, please? No. no, don't do it. Don't do it, my friend. Don't do it. It's not good for you. It's not good for you. Right, taste test. This poor kid, dude. This poor kid has to keep eating all this shit. Even Kay knows it's bad. Like, look at... <laughs> I'm still recovering from a cold, so... Oh, my God. So good. Oh. Yeah, I didn't cut it. He's a good son. Very good son, I have to say. He loves his mom very much. Well done. Okay, it. His face doesn't look impressed. I didn't see her salt once. I don't even know if she salted the pasta water, meaning pasta is not salted. The egg and cream mixture is not salted, which, you know, by itself, those two things don't taste particularly very good if it's not seasoned. You know, okay, the bacon will add some salt, but not nearly enough. And there was no pecorino cheese and it was cooked to scrambled eggs. Have you ever eaten unsalted scrambled eggs? Not good. It could be better with salt. Way better with salt. We're not even talking about a scrambled egg dish. This is carbonara. Carbonara! Carbonara! You kill the carbonara! Look at his face right there. He's telling you the pasta is crunchy, but it's moist at the same time. 
How come the eggs are scrambled? And how come the pancetta or the bacon is not cooked right? Yes, no? <laughs> he's, he's thinking of mom i don't know what to say right now let me keep eating let me see how long i can hold off telling you what this disaster tastes like everything's um plain, it's like <laughs> plain. there's literally you, there's just the slightest taste of bacon but apart from that oh no yeah the taste of the double cream but apart from that it's it's literally the hardly any flavor to it, so it, it's nice. Look, look at how per, look at how perplexed K is. It's like, really? Like, just how is that possible? Don't get me wrong. Look at her face. Look at her face. She's so disappointed. Oh, I'm so, so sorry for her right now. She tried so hard to do it. She tried so hard. She's disappointed. She's looking at the pasta right now, saying, "What have I done wrong?" What have you done wrong? No pecorino cheese. Eggs. Pepper. Where is the pepper? You oh yeah, where's the, pe where's the black pepper? Hey, oh, you need pancetta. Bacon is too bland, like he said. If you really want to use bacon, use a cute bacon with lots of flavors in it, you know? Like, as close as possible to pancetta or guanciale. I'm feeling sorry right now, to be honest. I am really sorry to disappoint Kay. She disappointed me first. But now I'm, I'm sorry, Kay. I didn't want to do this to you. I didn't want to do it to you. Little bits of flavor. You know. Can you taste the cream? Yeah, but not a lot. If you get what I mean. You might have to have it all then. <laughs> <laughs> She's upset. She said to the sun, "You don't love me." Oh, God. Maybe if you eat the whole thing, you'll finally get some flavor. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well <laughs> what a done. champ. Dude, what a champ. Oh, my God. I... <laughs> what a nice guy. Oh, my God. Dude, Vincenzo, you have such a heart of gold <laughs> right now. Uh, I had an absolute blast watching this video. K reacting to this. Uh, uh, K reacting. Of what? That would be great to see K react to videos of watching Vincenzo react to K. It was nice getting the little nuggets of knowledge from him. Admittedly, I have my own Carbonara video that I'm planning to film, and this is part of my research. Not that I'm trying to replicate her ditch, but I'm really looking for Vincenzo's feedback on a train wreck of a dish because typically those are the scenarios where you have a lot of knowledge to impart. Sorry, Kay, I'm giving you a one out of 10, nor do I think you care. What a blast this was. Hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. And until the next time, I am Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.